When I asked Chris and John together as duo this time uh, about their past, uh, Chris said that she grew up in Michigan and John in New Orleans, Louisiana. And Chris loved to spend holidays with her extended family, over 40 cousins she spent time with. John enjoyed having lunch at the top of his grandmother's crepe myrtle tree. And what brought them both to music, Chris said her mother played piano beautifully, and she would dance around the living room while she played classical music. John said, my parents thought learning a musical instrument would improve my penmanship. <laughs> and then he said, it did not. <laughs> In starting to sing and write songs, Chris said ever since she was a girl, she was writing songs, a little girl. She wrote worship songs for church and uh, created a neighborhood musical, um, but only started sharing her own original songs 15 years ago, and she has one CD at this time. John noted that he, the first time he heard the song Alley Oop, he knew he was destined to be a songwriter. <laughs> and a wonderful, uh, diverse songwriter. They both are, really. When asked how they met, uh, Chris stated that they met at open mics, just like this. The, a, this particular one where they met was run by our friend Ellen Schmidt at the Center for the Arts in Natick, and they got to know each other through Ellen's songwriting group. And John noted the first time he reached out to Chris was after he heard from a friend, she had written an extraordinarily sensitive song about his hometown of New Orleans. And then John and Chris noticed they had a similar approach in their music and their songwriting. They began to get together and collaborate and began to play together early in 2012. And by the end of 2012, they were also married. <laughs> When asked why share poems, stories, and songs with others, Chris said, I like connecting with people in this way. And John said, a poem or a song that is only, it is only known to the writer is a dream. It's when it's received by a listener that it truly becomes a poem or a song. So here to receive some of their poems, songs, dreams as duo, please welcome up John and Chris Bailey. i 
This is a song that was one of those gifts, gift songs. It came very quickly. I didn't have to do much with it.
doing with your love? What was I doing with your love? Did you leave it in the pocket of a coat you wore last year? Is it locked inside of your own in an office? That's buried in the cold, hard ground Do you hide it in a place no one can see? Have you kissed it on the cheek? Did you nail it to a tree? What are you doing with your love? You treat it so carelessly You put it where it doesn't belong And you cry John gave me this ukulele for Christmas. It's just my new favorite toy. It was the most successful gift I've ever given. <laughs> and uh, my newest song I wrote on the ukulele because it's just a great instrument. And John plays it with me, so.
of clay But there could be some kind of courage hidden deep inside Grab on to me as if I knew the way And I don't So this is fresh out of the box here. There is a room inside my heart No one has ever known a quiet and secluded spot where I can be alone. No temple of high sanctity, no verdant garden fair can match the peace that I find when I regard all life from them. But I've unlocked the door and pushed the curtains all aside. I've swept the dust up from the floor I've swung the windows wide I've filled it with such pleasant things a room with room to spare if you will give your hand Take you there happily into the very heart of me for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I'm approaching 85 and wondering why I'm still alive. Advanced years for some are gold, but it's not all fun when you are old. There often is some pain or ache. Do not fall, a bone might break. <laughs> skin eruptions, various itches, inside organs and counter glitches, <laughs> strength, endurance, start to slip, pep and energy, lose their zip, memory becomes uncertain. Is it time to draw the curtain? <laughs> but wait, there's other, often other ways for having future happy days. Loved ones visit, we reminisce of experiences that gave us bliss. The shows, the music, happy times,
the scenic trips, exotic wines. Life is filled with memories to boast of any time you please. Exaggerate what you've achieved, even if you're not believed. Maybe humor is the key to help preserve your sanity. <laughs> So like I was saying last time, it always seems that I come into these conversations somewhere in the middle, as if I wandered off somewhere, which I did. Where did I go? Well, I don't want to go there, because that's the trap. The thought train is always leaving the station. And I have to catch it. I missed the all aboard. All aboard. I'm going to catch it. i got to make this train. i got to keep my job. I'm going to get there time, and I see the conductor's head sticking out of the window. I know he's just fidgeting that, that door slam control ready to shove it in my face. But I'm going to make, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to make this train. Yes, I am. Excuse me. OK, OK, uh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm working on the timing of my music. And pretend you heard the door slam. Oh, God, I made it. And look at there, an empty seat in an empty row. Hey, life's not so bad after all. I slink into my seat as I notice my fellow passengers' heads in front of me all bent forward in deflection to their personal devices. I'm going to leave mine in my pocket and bend my head forward in deflection to the savior of sleep. The savior of sleep. You're just providing for your children. I turn to see my father. The fact that he passed from earthly existence 10 years ago is not available to my dreaming mind in this timeless realm of the dream. Dream timelessness. Maybe that's why I seek the savior of sleep, a perspective on this parade of life. But what kind of perspective is this? As I look behind him and then look up and forward, we seem to be at the bottom of some gigantic jungle gym in some kind of structure where the ceiling and the walls are not even visible. The lattice work extending into the darkness. Dad, sure I'm providing for my kids, but I didn't know we'd come to this. Dad, look, I could climb forever. What happened? I would be the maverick. I could climb forever and go nowhere. Dad, what does this all mean? Shh. I turn, and my father has now become a professor. A professor who's like every professor rolled into one. He looks like Dr. Einstein. Shh. You're making destruction with your thoughts, with your thinking. Just stop. Follow me. Feel the sunshine on your face. And lo and behold, we're outside. Follow me. You must get out of your head. You must talk to people. Tell them what happened. Come, follow me. I have some people I want you to talk to. He's standing outside of a door, and his hand is on the knob. He pushes it open, and I go through. Come, talk to these people. And so I walk inside, and I look forward, and there's all these people sitting, looking at me. Tell them what happened. I was just trying to catch a train. <laughs> Ammonite, spirals, walls, sutures, scepter. The form of time, the eternal winding, the clue in the curling, the curling of water as it moves in the whirlpool is the form of water running out, is the shape of the shell, is the shape of the nebula. i
Mary.